Hello YouTube, Chance Paladin here, doing another auditor, internal auditor training, or just training for critical thinkers out there, I guess. But if you're going to need to be poking or prodding, this is the right place to be in dealing with people. So let's just get started. We're going to be going over uh, Gemba auditing, or... As, as I like to call it, auditing by walking around. Um, Gemba is Japanese for the the real place, or I, I guess it depends slightly how you interpret it, but I interpret it to mean auditing by walking around. We'll get to that. Maintaining objectivity and gathering supporting supportive supporting evidence. <clears throat> Introduction. If it is your first time auditing a new area, your first instinct is going to to be to just talk to the manager, get an overview, write a report, and then be done with them for a year <laughs> or however long. Here are some things to remember to make those first audits as value add as possible. Now you may be going, whoa, 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 why would I do that? I'm supposed to do X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. Well, if it's your first time auditing, like I know it was when it was my first time auditing, I was scared. I, my, my manager didn't come with me, and, which he loved to do, which actually made me a lot stronger, just threw me right in, and he knew I could do it, I just didn't know I could do it, and it took me a long time to really come out of my shell, but even when I was auditing a brand new department, my first audit was still, honestly, usually just with the manager. I, I kind of stuck with it, but I never did that for a second audit unless I was starting to get disconnected from the department or if the department was starting to get disconnected. Um, and then even then, I always would start every single audit by talking to the manager anyway to just set the tone. So it's not wrong but it may not necessarily be value add it depends on how honest the manager's going to be with you so let's pretend you're past that and move forward so the big thing and this sounds really really <laughs> obvious or basic but walk walk through their <clears throat> their department you can find out all kinds of bizarro things just by walking around. You can see their metrics. You can see, like we talked about in part four, if maybe people are frustrated. You can see the looks on their faces. If they all look happy, if they all look depressed or tired. Or just their the, the work atmosphere. So maybe you notice that their systems don't work. Maybe you notice that they're all socializing and not working at all. They tell you how busy they are, but you do the walkthrough and you find out nobody's working. So or somebody's locked out of their account and gets up and walks off or somebody spills their food. And, uh, you know, you, there's just all kinds of things you can, things you can tell. But yeah, but you got to be able to get out of your comfort zone. And plus, if they don't want you to leave their, their cube to go walk around, then you know you've got another problem. So, anyway, moving on. Get a live walkthrough of every system they talk about. Managers love to just ramble, and even some entrepreneurial supervisors, love to just ramble off systems that they talk about. Blah, blah, blah. We have this, that, this, that. Blah, 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 blah. They're so great. <clears throat> Try to write those down. Ask them to slow down. Write, uh, write down everything they say. And then, hopefully they tell you, or you can ask if not, what those systems do. And if you need to go through any of those systems anyway, excuse me, then you've already got the names of them and they've already been talking them up and so when they try to log in and find out their password doesn't work you know you've got a huge problem and yes that's happened to me before <clears throat> there was a main system this place was supposed to use to be controlling all their project documentation 
and yes everybody uses this and it's where all of our project documentation goes and I said okay we'll just grab two people and have them show us the project documentation they should be able to do that right of course they should be able to do that they should be in the system every single day okay first guy we got to opened it up no problem the second guy didn't <clears throat> didn't know how to get into it to open it. Had never put anything in there before. And his password didn't work, and he was putting the stuff on a server somewhere that nobody knew about. And we got into a huge fight. We got into a huge argument, and unfortunately, the supervisor had to step away for it for a minute. For a minute, but he was there long enough to realize that things had gone sideways and just left me to fend for myself which again is fine you're gonna have to fend for yourself a lot so you gotta be strong but they got a pretty sizable nonconformance for that and that was the beginning of the end for that version of the software that uh, unraveled a much larger issue which I would have never imagined based on how much everybody talked up the system so that was that was the first kind of little damage in the armor that unraveled a much larger mystery that took many 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 years to turn around but that was the beginning for everything subjective there's there's an alternative objective um, that's kind of a weird saying but basically when people are talking to you about their systems they're more than likely being subjective they're not looking at their systems for an, from an external point of view they're looking at their systems through an internal point of view and that's why you can never take a department's own internal audits as as um, as subjective honestly I mean they're all objective they're not I don't know you have to be able to do your own since you're outside the department you've got a much better view of what they're doing they're you know they're in the trees they can't see the forest so keep that in mind properly and methodically gather the evidence to give your report credibility I've said this in an, one or two other ones at least you do all the work don't forget to document what you did otherwise your report looks like you completely made it up on, on an airplane and there are people that do that but you're doing yourself a huge disservice if you don't gather the evidence I, I know it takes an extra minute I know it's a little uncomfortable but if you've got a bunch of records pulled out go through find the control numbers okay find the effectivity dates you you owe it to yourself so we'll talk about uh, Gimba a little bit think of it as auditing where you actually need to be but not knowing where you need to be yet now some people may say oh you're just wandering around looking for problems no it it's not that at all it's just passive awareness basically when you walk through a department you get a little bit of the life that that department lives if there if there's quality issues you may they, they may not even know to be able to tell you that there is for example they're not sitting next to the people who they need to or their light is blinking up in the ceiling and it's driving them nuts or they sit next to a window where there could be distractions and maybe they don't need distractions maybe they need to focus or maybe uh, there, there could be uh, a million things okay the AC could be blowing right on them which I've, I've seen before so 
a lot of these things it's not you're you're not looking for problems you're looking for answers you're looking for why everything is the way it is it could be the, the opposite maybe everything works amazing and by walking around you'll just be able to see why you know i've heard stories of where things have been going really bad and everybody's gloomy and then the next time they come you know business is on an upswing and everything just feels better and management loves that kind of feedback they love that validation that everything's going okay again from a third party so it means walking through the department and it means walking through the software if there's mistakes in the software over and over and over again and you're watching them use the software and you notice they type they're typing and all of a sudden the cursor starts moving all by itself because of some defect or they have to click submit three times because the first two submits don't work and all of a sudden it generates three tickets if you read the process it's never going to tell you that you can only see that by watching it being used so just try to keep that in mind the idea being that you want transparency so you can see for yourself and basically instead of being told you keep your mind open and wait until something makes you curious like walking by metrics which is why you should always ask to see metrics in the first place but if somebody says they don't have metrics and so then you walk by them <laughs> and you walk by the metrics and go what are these those are our metrics you said we didn't have metrics well I didn't think you were actually going to be walking around our department okay let's look at the metrics Gamba auditing part two a second set of eyes is not what the department may want but it may be exactly what they need be that second set of objective eyes for them that doesn't mean being used as a weapon but like come look at this come look at that we've been trying to get this changed and it hasn't worked you gotta handle that differently than if you saw something on your own you have to be perceptive you know check for wind coming through the windows check for temperatures check for lighting check check all that building infrastructure check for tripping hazards check for people's computer sessions timing out in the middle of them working I, I can't remember if I've talked about this before but I was sitting there watching a guy trying to do his work and all of a sudden the software just kicked him out without saving right in the middle of it and he's like oh dang somebody else must have logged in like he didn't even care and I was like how often does that happen oh like three times a day but before his uh, supervisor could shut him up and I, and he's like oh no it doesn't happen that often does it and he's like oh well uh and I and I stopped to try to get him off that and I said how how many employees do you have working on the system and he's like 15 or something like that and I'm, he's like there's external people that keep kicking us off because they don't know that we're on and I said so basically you've got a, a decent sized department full of people that are all getting kicked off in the middle of their work every day oh it doesn't happen that often and then he gives his employee a dirty look and, and I was like okay obviously we need to go back to your desk and have a talk so I took the manager back he's like I don't know why I don't know why he said that it's not that bad and I said I tell you what why don't we get your manager and we're gonna ask everybody okay since since you say it doesn't happen so either he's really upset or you're lying and this has got to go on my report so I watched him get kicked out I can't ignore that okay now that could have been a one-off and so if you don't want to involve management yet let me sit with your employees each for a half hour I won't bug them and let me just see what they see and if it keeps happening 
then I get to document it. If it doesn't happen, I'll let it go. And he said, no, it's okay. Document it. And I go, okay. That was easy, wasn't it? Because the employee had been saying, oh, such and such a play and such and such a play get kicked off and da 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 So, I mean, it... You've, you've got to walk around. You've got to watch people walk through their software. Super important. Objectivity. When I look for objectivity, I look for situations that couldn't be swayed by an individual. These can be as simple as talking directly to the source instead of through an intermediary or listening for keywords during the conversation. Words like I think, should, and hope are key indicators of subjectivity and intention instead of objectivity and reality. If a definitive answer cannot be given after a couple of attempts from different directions, it is time to look further for the why and not the what. So, that's that's a big one. Like, if you need to pause and think about it, I understand. But if you keep hearing people say, I think it should be this way, I would hope that that it would be that way i hear this in like every conversation every day well it shouldn't be this way well i would hope that and i think that no it's either it is or it isn't either it happens or it doesn't and you have to be able to reach definitive answers they don't have to be absolutes but sometimes is uh, if you get a sometimes it's better than you get a, a should or an i think or a hope at least you're driving towards something and then if you keep getting those subjectivity and intention flags where they wish i wish things were this way okay that means that they're not so it's time to look further for the why and not the what Figure out why things are the way they are. Obviously, there's something going on. It may not be major. Major, major. And it may have, you know, no ill will behind it. Everything may be fine. But it still means that something's there. You just don't know why yet. So you need to know the why. Subjectivity can only be used as an alternative if enough independent sources chatter converge at a single point. People would always ask me, how do you know? How did you know to come here? How did you know that's that, this, that? Excuse me, I said, because there's chatter. As soon as I get three different sources saying exactly the same thing or something very, very close, I know where to look. You can't, you can't get three different people from three different areas to all talk about the same thing unless something's going on. It may not be what they say, but it means something is definitely going on. So, I call it chatter. And then, obviously management wants to keep the chatter cut down. Here's the little auditor trying to analyze the chatter. He doesn't have a notebook with him. He should probably have a notebook. It's probably in his pocket. Um, the best place for this, you're going to laugh, in the cafeteria. I would, I forgot if I've said this in prior videos, I apologize. But I would bring my notebook down to the cafeteria and just write down what everybody said. If it sounded like something that was potentially going to negatively affect the company somehow and then if I ever heard three different people having a conversation about the same thing bingo I would have enough in, in my mind you don't ever want to go on, on one thing but if you're just hearing it passively um I didn't stalk people or anything, but if you're sitting there working, or if you're sitting there eating your food, and people won't stop, stop talking about their work stuff, 
while you're trying to eat, you know, you're right. It's like free information, basically. And, and then the other thing that would happen is, uh, some managers, they would call it giving me a bone where we'd be having lunch and the managers would bring people over and they'd be like, so tell, tell me how this is doing. <laughs> well, it's not good. Ba 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 ba. And I just start writing it all down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, this is the auditor. <laughs> it was, it was just, I was, I was an internal auditor, so you would never do that with anybody external. But um, I was there to help them. <laughs> I just, you learn a lot. You learn a lot through chatter, so you don't have to be sociable, but you got to be able to absorb conversations so lastly but not leastly evidence I think of evidence like capturing a moment in time that can be referenced back to a record with a control number and a unique identifier or taking a literal picture of a situation that words can't quite capture going back to the Gemba thing I'd be walking through departments sometimes and I would see records sitting out and they had a bad habit. There was a bad office culture of leaving records <laughs> sitting out, no matter how many times I told them not to, and wrote them up for it, and they kept doing it. And they got better in some cases. In other cases, they got they got dinged, and so, um, and in some cases, we had some pretty nasty disagreements. But they all ended, believe me, with everybody putting their records away. But a picture is worth a thousand words. And I walked around with my cell phone camera, and if I saw something I didn't like, I took a picture of it. Every single time. And if they didn't want me to take a picture of it, I'd go, okay. And then they would turn the corner and I'd take a picture of it anyway. Or I would come back when they weren't there and take a picture of it anyway. And then if they caught me, I'd just say, sorry, uh, my manager asked me to come take a second look at this or something. I don't know. And there would be like ongoing court cases with uh, the records just sitting out. And it's like, you guys, you guys can't do this. I don't care what you have to do, but these records need to be locked up. And nothing bad ever happened. At least at least in that one, but when when you can get audited by so many government agencies and when you're taking documents to court What usually what you get dinged for is if you're if you're not able to produce the records fast enough. They have they have set amounts of time, and I know I'm getting off on a little bit of a tangent. I I am and I'm not. This is all about evidence. It doesn't matter if it's evidence to a court, evidence to your your audit report. Or evidence to a government agency which there are a lot of and they love to audit you've got to be able to produce evidence every time and it's like capturing a moment in time you only need two or three to for at least for an audit report to give credibility usually courts only ask for one if it's something specific to what they need and it's actually a good practice because it forces you to think because if you start collecting evidence and realize that the evidence doesn't support what you're saying it's like a, like a jolt like oh shoot okay that's not good and then you got to make sure you don't <laughs> Don't tailor it to support the evidence, but don't tailor the evidence to support what you're saying either. You kind of got to 
figure out where you got scrambled. And you may have to eat some of your pride, but the evidence is the evidence. And that's it. Never forget that. As always, make sure you aren't being used for personal agendas or pet projects. The evidence has to be objective, impartial, and a fair representation. Like I keep saying, don't be used as a weapon. Managers, especially weak ones or conniving ones, love to use auditors as weapons against other people. So, if the evidence is there, then the evidence is there. If the evidence is not there, it's not there. It only it only means a good auditor always told me this, you know. Sometimes it's going to be there and sometimes it's not going to be there. It that only means that it either was there or it wasn't there. That's all it means. It's a it's binary. It's either true or false. It's either there or not. It either was good or it was not good. You know, conforming or non-conforming. That's all it is. And You've got to be, at the end of the day, true to what the scope of your position is. If you're lost prevention, maybe you will end up a sort of a weapon or a blunt force tool. But if you're just, just an auditor, the only thing you're doing is reporting the facts. It's all you're doing and interpreting the standard it has nothing to do with people, so you should not be used as a weapon. So to recap all this, make sure you are getting overview from the manager, but make sure you walk the department, review the software and systems with employees that regularly do the work. So it's okay to talk to the manager, just don't spend all your time with them. Make sure you take everything into consideration. And make sure it maintains a level of objectivity and let subjectivity provide a higher level of confidence if it wants to be taken seriously. Basically, the subjectivity can be there, but if it's unconfident, kind of squirrely, conniving, sniveling subjectivity that is using lots of I wishes and shoulda, woulda, coulda, it, it honestly should not go into your audit report if there's nothing substantial there. Attempt to gather a reasonable amount of records to support each point you attempt to make in your report. Uh, 3 to 5 is a good number. However, if you start noticing discrepancies, uh, a good manager I know would pull 5. If one was bad, he'd pull another 5. If one was bad, He'd pull another five. He'd do that three times. To kind of generate in his mind what the population probably looks like. Um, <laughs> if somebody pulled five and four of them were bad, he'd, ha he'd pull another five and if four of them were bad, he would be able to... <laughs> he... That would be a, high, a much higher level... <laughs> um, issue and that's happened to me before that was that was a huge huge nonconformance um, there was entire sections of records missing it's happened it's happened twice one of the times I found it one of the times a government agency found it before I did because they they dug more thoroughly than I ever would have which is what they do and that's good but they were missing entire sections of records and that's what I did. I tried to pull five, and they weren't there. I tried to pull another five, and there was, like, one. And I said, oh, okay, where are the records? And, and you know, it wasn't a ha-ha gotcha moment. It ended up developing into an entirely new software system where everything they had was electronic, and they never lost another record again. So... <laughs> That's that's how you that's how you got to see it, okay? And they ended up with their own internal auditors that did a a very fair objective review of their own system, and they busted their people 
if they weren't following the rules all the time. They were very, they ended up doing a very good job to where all I had to do was audit their audits and make sure they were staying subjective. So, or objective, not subjective. They were, they were actually harder on themselves than I would have been. But you still have to audit their audits. They can't just become your audits. And that's important. So, that's it. That's it, honestly, for this one. Gimba, objectivity, and evidence. So, I'm going to cut this one. But thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and tell your friends. And take care out there in the auditing world, alright? Bye for now.